You Against You podcast, and I'm your host, Deja Nicole. So in today's episode, which is season three, episode number 10, I will be talking about how to be a wellness girly. So this is the go-to guide of becoming a wellness girly. So something about me is I do want to like be more healthy or health conscious, and I feel like this guide will also be very important to me as well but I feel like because summer is around the corner it's just like what mid-June and it's still the beginning of May but you know for some people it feels like summer and for other people it feels like spring so I feel like May is the right and perfect month to talk about this topic so if you don't know season three is all about romanticizing your life and I feel like if you want to be in your wellness era then yeah you're romanticizing your life you are creating workout routines and morning routines and nighttime routines all that for yourself but if you do want to become more health conscious and create a wellness routine and be a wellness girly then this episode is for you but before we start today's episode besties we do have to get through some things before we start so the first thing is mental health checkup so i'm not gonna lie i've been tired um i feel like because now i have more time before i start my summer semester in a few weeks i have a lot of things to do personally like work on my novels work on, you know, posting or trying to edit all these content and working on YouTube and then podcast stuff and my business, trying to think of more products for my business and promote that. Note to self, I still got to edit some business TikToks, but just getting things done. Plus, I'm having brand ambassadors, so I'm getting like, I have to make the slide for that before the meeting, which is like in two weeks and I got study for my permit. It's like so much. Like I have enough free time, but because I have enough free time, I have so much things I want to do and I'm doing it. Plus I'm writing a novel. I'm rewriting a novel. So it's just like too much, but I am taking breaks. I am going on walks and moving my body. So I would say my mental health has been like up and down, like fluctuating, fluctuating like throughout this past week. It is Saturday, May 11th. So this episode is coming out tomorrow, by the way. But yeah, it's just been 50 50 with the mental health. But I am doing things to not overstress myself and to not overwork myself being a content creator is hard being an upcoming author is hard being a entrepreneur who's trying to grow their business is hard none of this is easy it might look easy to you when you're looking from like your phone screen or computer screen or on tv wherever you watch content but behind the scenes it is hard. Like, after this, I'm going to do a study technique of me just recording my permit test study notes so I can, like, hear it on repeat throughout the week while I'm studying for my permit test. And it's just, I got a lot of things going on. But my mental health has been, like, 50-50 besties. So, yeah. Now, the next thing is the quote of the day. So the quote of the day is, no matter where you are, there's a reason why you're not. No, hold up. Scratch that. Let me repeat that. No matter where you are, there's a reason why you're there. So I'm going to repeat that. No matter where you are, there's a reason why you're there. So I feel like this quote, I feel like all the quotes actually can relate to someone and also can relate to me so this quote I like I have a motivation app that gives me daily quotes so that's how we get in my quotes like for each episode but I feel like I can like relate to this quote because one I don't know I feel like 
I'm behind in life. I probably have told y'all that like in a couple of episodes or if you like watch my YouTube channel and watch some of my YouTube videos, I probably like mention that. But I feel like I am behind in life. Like everyone, you know, has like a family of their own or married, this and that. So it's like, I feel like I'm stuck. I, I always tell myself like, am I stuck where I'm at? Why why don't I feel like I'm moving forward in life? But in fact, I am. It's just taking a longer process than others. Plus, you never want to rush in life. And that is so true. And I'm, like, happy and grateful on where I'm at in life because rushing through life... Because I feel like I see everyone having kids and, you know, being married... I don't know how they feel, you know, when they're by themselves or how they feel mentally. So that's why I feel like with this quote, if you do feel like, well, do I feel behind in life because a person A or person B has this going on in their life and I just feel like I'm stuck. Just know, no, you're not stuck. It's just your time is coming and you're having so many milestones that's just waiting for you to get there and to achieve them so remember again no matter where you are there's a reason why you're there and to not also rush through life because you're going to miss out on a lot when you rush through life now the affirmation of the day is i enjoy a life of happiness health and harmony again the affirmation of the day is i enjoy a life of happiness health and and harmony. So before we get into the episode, the journal prompt is what is your favorite wellness activity? I would say going on hot girl walks and also doing at home Pilates. If y'all don't know, I don't have my license, but there's so many like good Pilates videos that you can just do on a yoga mat and it can really get you burning and stuff so I will I will probably put some in the show notes if you want to try at home Pilates first before getting like a Pilates membership but yeah those are my like two favorite wellness things and also journaling so yeah so again the journal prompt is What is your favorite wellness activity or activities? Now, besties, let's get into today's episode. So the first topic I'm going to talk about is what does it mean to be a wellness girly or a wellness girl? So being like in your wellness era, I feel like that's very popular on social media, but it can really help you get your life together and get you, you right because it is more of a how can I change for me? How can I change how I think? How can I change what I put in my body? How can I change on the things that I do? How can I change on what can make me happy more, you know? So the first thing is, which is actually the only thing under this topic, is if you want to, like, be a wellness girly and what does it mean to be a wellness girly, it means that you are ready to leave behind unfavorable habits. So these are all the bad habits. And everyone is not perfect. We all have bad habits, no matter if it's, doom scrolling on social media, procrastinating, hitting the snooze button on our alarms, binge eating, um, sitting on our butts and watching TV, whatever it is, that is like unfavorable habits. And if you don't know what are your unfavorable habits, you can always just sit down with a journal and write down and it can give you like thinking for a bit but it will soon help you realize what are your bad habits and how can you stop doing those bad habits and I I have like probably done this once or twice and I think because I'm trying to like be more organized 
and just trying to do things to make me happy, I think I'm going to start doing that as well. So, also, it helps to embrace on what and who makes you feel happiest and the healthiest. So, that means the good habits. That means whatever it is that can make you happy. This can be cooking. This can be working out. This can be listening to a podcast like you against you podcast. This can be journaling, reading like mm, reading makes me happy going on a walk makes me happy working out even though sometimes I don't feel like it makes me happy I'm actually planning to have a habit tracker notion template for like five bucks soon after like I fix it up a bit because I'm like upgrading each of my like notion pages so I will probably Once I'm done with it, I probably mention it in, like, an episode and on social media. But, yeah, like, whatever it is that makes you happy, just do it. And that's basically what being a wellness girly is. Now, let's get to the next topic, which is how can you start this journey? So, first of all, you want to set goals for yourself. So, I have seen this on tiktok a lot but i don't like really see like women doing this i have seen men doing this and i want to start doing this and i am encouraging every woman to do this because like i like watching like men who has like routines for themselves and who has like has like goals you know and same thing with women so like if they're in a wellness men who's in a wellness lifestyle category as in like women because i like watching wellness and lifestyle female women creators and same thing with male creators so i have seen male creators who is into the lifestyle wellness niche but i rarely see this in women so i'm going to probably start this this week but do it on notion because i do have a notebook but I, I'm using those notebooks for my writing and I want to keep everything in Notion just in case if I ever, ever, ever want to look back on what was my daily goals for that day one day, I can look back. But it's to writing daily goals every morning or typing them out. You can do this for like five or 15 minutes and just the first thing on my list on how to start this journey is to set goals for yourself i feel like you need to have goals for yourself to push you to something bigger and greater i feel like if you don't have goals for yourself what's the point of life yes a lot of people don't have goals for themselves and i know some people who don't have goals for themselves and i always trying to like push them and say like you have to it's like a meaningful thing to have in life because you're going after towards something but then like I said I get it because some people just want life on how it goes day by day week by week month by month and so on so they don't really have goals for themselves but you want to write goals for yourself because it's going to get you to the bigger tr- picture, the bigger trophy, the grand prize, first place, whatever on how you see that main goal. So I remember I talked like two seasons ago. I got to find what episode that is. And I did make a template, so I will probably put this template like in the show notes. But if you're someone who is who don't really like set goals for themselves and you need a little guidelines on setting goals for yourself try to like think of five things on what big things you want to achieve and this don't have to be monthly goals this can be just goals you want to achieve by the end of the year or just by the time you turn your next age so like for me if i want to make goals on by the time i turn 22 like I do, I want to get my license, I will like make these goals. And you want to just write them down. Then you want to make steps for those goals. 
And those steps are actually called sub-goals. The reason why I call them sub-goals is because it's helping you and pushing you to go through each step and you're actually achieving each and every one which you're going to reward yourself after and is helping you getting to the big goal so if you're someone who don't set goals for yourself you should do that and i will have that notion template in the show notes down below and it is free this one is free you just have to download it and then add it to your notion and then voila you can customize it however you want you know add it to your home page whatever but it will be in the show notes if you want to try it out the next thing is assess your current state so i kind of like talked about this like a few months ago but assessing your current state meaning it's just kind of evaluating yourself at the moment on things that you can change and you want to ask yourself, okay, what am I doing that I need to stop doing? So when you're like trying to figure out your bad habits, what can I do to stop these bad habits? Because bad habits can actually overweigh onto your good habits, meaning you can have more bad habits than having more good habits. So sometimes you have to kind of just take a step back, assess yourself, and see what you can make a change in your life. The next thing is just creating a plan, whatever it is, this can be a morning routine, which is kind of a plan, a goal, or a couple of goals, or a night routine, but just creating a plan on how you can become a better self. The next thing is tracking your progress. So this can be used by if you like working out, right? I don't know if you heard of like, well, you probably have, but like the 70 hard challenge and 75, 75 days hard challenge. So 75 hard and 75 soft challenge. And for both challenge, you are tracking your progress by taking the picture on how your body started from day one to day 10 to day 60 to day 75 like you're tracking your progress so this can also be a way of doing a habit tracker and just doing all the habits that you do on a daily basis so you can create a routine because if you don't know it takes about a month for you to do a habit to make it and have it stick to your routine so having a habit tracker can help you track that but just tracking your progress on whatever it is and you can just do pictures you can do check boxes whatever it is track it you can even do this by journaling a lot of people journal by tracking their progress as well the next thing is just being patient and kind to yourself and I feel like this is just like it's easy for some people and it's hard for others I feel like when it's hard for others they they let people push them around they let people control them they let people speak for them and that really doesn't put respect on themselves I have let people control me and I have let people speak for myself which I really don't like and I don't really appreciate but that is not you being kind to yourself so when you kind of like break that barrier of letting people do that and speaking up for yourself you are being kind for yourself (laughs) because whoever that person is inside you who dealt with that is is happy and they feel safe now, another way that you can be kind for your, to yourself and for yourself is buying yourself gifts, doing a self-care day, buying yourself flowers, moving your body, getting some fresh air. I recently did a video on my YouTube channel, which I will put in the show notes as well, on how I did 10 healthy habits for a day and I walked and I really like doing that video and I'm trying to make it actually stick and I kind of explained through each habit that I was doing and showing to you guys that these habits 
are easy habits that you can try. I didn't do no hard habits, but for some people, having a habit is hard. But going outside is a way of treating yourself, going on a bike ride, going on a hot girl walk, whatever it is, picking some flowers for yourself, getting a sweet treat, making a matcha, making a coffee. Now that I think about it, I'm going to make me an iced coffee. Even though it's 6.25 p.m., your girl got to edit this um, podcast episode for you guys. Plus, I have to edit some short content, short form content for my social medias podcast social media and my business social media so yeah and by the way go follow you against you podcast on ig and tiktok at you against you pod dot by deja so um yeah and also don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you're watching this on youtube leave a rating a review if you listen to this on apple podcast and leave a rating and answer the Q&A question and poll. If there is a poll on Spotify, I really appreciate that. But let's just continue on to this episode. Now, like I said, I said both being patient and being and kind to yourself. Now, this one can be very hard because a lot of people can't be patient. A lot of people want a lot of things in life. And if you don't know, I am a Christian and this is something that I have trouble with is being patient and sometimes I can but sometimes I ask God why not me when will it be my turn and like I said earlier I know a lot of people who has family of their own I have a lot I know a lot of people I went to high school with who are married have families of their own own house you know place has a good job you know but I don't know their situation on how they got it or what they did I just know I have to be patient and be kind to myself and let God do all of it because that's the the you know that's half that's how it has to be because you don't want to like rush through things now the last thing under how to start this journey of being a wellness girly is staying consistent (laughs) now this is easy said than done but staying consistent so i'm like "Mm." but staying consistent can be hard for some people like myself i'm not gonna like be like oh i work out every single day no i don't work out every single day uh i didn't work out yesterday and i'm not working out today i actually have a busy schedule today oh and trying to get a lot of content like like in my draft so I can post it for you guys and I was just very tired and busy like I had to like cancel yesterday um a podcast episode to do with a guest just because I was just so busy doing something personally um so it's just like I can't stay consistent and sometimes that is okay but if you want to learn how to stay consistent like I said earlier having a habit tracker can help and also try to make a schedule try to do that schedule for a week and tweak it up a bit and then after you do that see okay well yeah this is like a routine that I can do and if you can't do it that is okay just try to stay consistent because once you're consistent with things your brain will realize that and they would like it would tell you like if you like sitting and you don't feel like working out your brain will tell you, you know around this time of day you have to work out you usually work out so get up and work out you know so our body will know and will tell you to do things without you realizing it because your brain will soon get the use of it now, the next category before we end this episode is healthy habits to do if you want to be a wellness girly like myself. So, the first one is getting moving. Get moving. Not getting, but get moving. So, this is just finding a workout that works for you. I feel like with social media, and you will always hear me say that, 
with a social media, with social media, with social media. But with a social media, especially, there's a lot of content of workouts, gym, all of that. And a lot of people, especially with women who has nice bodies or is very muscular and whatever, you don't know what they take. You don't know if they got plastic surgery or any procedure done. You don't know if they take steroids or not. Or it really took them years to, like, get the body that they have. But you also don't know what workouts works for them. A lot of people don't realize that some workouts that you see online will not work for you like I love doing RDLs because I have seen the improvement when I do RDLs and I love doing squats I love doing the sit back leg lifts and like if I'm in the gym but I I love doing squats I love doing lunges even though I have a hate and a hate and love relationship with lunges I love doing walking lunges mostly I like doing those better than regular lunges I also love doing reverse lunges as well but that's just because I've seen what it does to my body and toned this and that. And I like it and I know that I can do it. For you, you might not like lunges. I know a lot of people who don't like doing lunges. So find a workout that works for you and that you love doing. So like for some people, some people love Pilates. I don't know. If that would change once I truly go to it, like a Pilates studio <laughs> and do Pilates, hopefully it doesn't. But I love doing Pilates, even though it's at home. But for some people, they might not because it seems so difficult. So just find a workout that works for you. And if you also have seen some type of improvement, then keep doing it. Like I did love doing treadmill, going like on the incline of what 12 and doing it for like a speed of three maybe 2.5 2.7 to three and doing it for 15 minutes because i'm not doing it for 30 just for health reasons i have done it for 30 but i would never do that again only if i really wanted to i love doing stair masters even though i almost had a near-death experience on that thing but um that's that's because i was really very very distracted that day um but whatever workout works for you you do it and that is okay now the next thing is eating food that you love now i don't know if you hear me but i don't i don't eat healthy Okay, I don't. I love coffee. I love matcha. I love tea. I love carbs. I love... Okay, I'm not a big sweet tooth person, but I love a couple of sweets like strawberry cake, gelato. What else? Um, It depends on the donut. Um, What else? I love croissants. I love cannolis. If you know what the... It's like, the, it's like an Italian dessert, I think. I love Rice Krispie treats. I love certain type of candies because they remind me of my childhood. Whatever. I like what I like. I love fish, no matter if it's baked, air fried, or fried. I love chicken. I'm not a big fan of fried chicken, but I really like eat it. I love rice. I love pasta. I love seafood. I have a balanced diet. I love food, okay? I will say I'm a big foodie. But... I love eating what I love. I love pizza. I would do a pizza. I kid you not. If I don't feel like eating healthy. I eat a pizza. Just add a lot of vegetables on it. But I love food. Okay. I have high metabolism. So like I can eat an hour after finish eating. Which is pretty scary. It seems like I have a tapeworm. But I don't. And... I'm so glad that I never really restricted myself eating. I feel like with social media, a lot of people restrict themselves from eating. So like I said, I don't really restrict myself from eating. I love eating no matter what. I kid you not. I love chips. My favorite chips are salt and vinegar, Lay's, barbecue chips, the sun chips salsa. That's like a childhood favorite. Bunions, I love Oreos. I love Oreos. Oh my gosh. I love chicken popcorn. Oh my gosh. 
the sweet and salty kettle corn perfect i love olipop i love poppy i'm not a big like soda type of person but if i had to choose a soda it would either be root beer dr pepper and sprite and pineapple fanta because that's good i love my starbucks i love my dunkin i love making my own coffee you know i'm I love eating. I love, in, you know. So, yeah, and I love chocolate. But eating food that you love and not restricting yourself can really, you know, it can be a feel good thing than a feel not so good thing. And yes, this is all about being a wellness girly, but that is so true. I feel like being a wellness girl is not just having a healthy lifestyle. It's also being happy and healthy. So it is okay to indulge on the things and eat the things that you like once or twice a week or three times a month or whatever, especially if you're on your cycle. Because I know I'm not the only one who's on their cycle and is craving something sweet or something spicy or something fried or something. Oh my gosh, you know? So just enjoy, eat the food that you enjoy. It will make you feel happy. Do not restrict yourself from eating on the things that you enjoy eating. And do not feel bad on the foods that you like eating that you love eating i would say not like but love eating because that's gonna really put a like like a punch really into your mental health so you don't want to really do that so again eat the food that you love and it's okay and whatever someone say you know i thought she was on a diet or you always like eat something healthy or this or that just ignore them cut them out you know especially if it's a friend and who says that cut them out just ignore them and just know it's okay to have a sweet tooth and it's okay to have something savory and crispy and fried you know so yeah so the next thing is do whatever you need to put your mental health first this is so true so (laughs) sometimes you cannot get things done if your mental health is not right it's like if your mental health is bad your room would be dirty that is the like honest truth so if you're having those days right that you're not yourself mentally try to just drop everything Drop everything that you have planned and go on a solo date or binge watch your favorite movie series or just movie or TV series or Siri because I said series, um, but TV series to receive TV series, movie, movie marathon, order out somewhere that you're craving, whatever, if you're not like in that big slump. And just spend time for yourself because a way for your mental health to be better is either spend time with God and not or but and spending time with yourself and doing the things that you know that will make you happy. And if you didn't know, you can't make any other person happy if you are not happy. So If you want to help others, help yourself first if you're not yourself mentally. Because how can you help others if you can't help yourself and you're not you, you know? So, yeah. So, the next thing is never neglecting self-care. I feel like a lot of people do this because of their busy schedules. But I think I, I want to do, like, every Sunday, starting next Sunday, not tomorrow, but starting next Sunday, is to just have a self-care day. And just, you know, I have a waxer. I have nail polish. I have a clay mask. I literally can do this in my room, you know? And just, you know, paint my toes, paint my nails, do a face mask, have a dance party in my room, 
wax my legs if I don't feel like shaving them. You know, just have a day dedicated to self-care if you are someone who neglects it. And I feel like Sundays are like the perfect day of doing a self-care day because Sunday and self-care, self starts with an S, Sunday starts with an S, and it's like the typical day to do a self-care day. You can also do some cleaning, you can also do some reading, you know, so don't neglect your self-care days. Try to find a day in a week to do it, even if you have a busy schedule, and do it spend time with yourself love yourself and the next thing is going on solo dates i feel like this is something once i get my license i want to start doing sometimes i do i feel like i go like on a mini solo date when i go out reading outside just underneath this tree on a blanket and bring like a snack or and like you know sometimes I would bring like a matcha or a coffee in my water and listen to like a podcast or some music and just take pictures and read and all of that that is a picnic under the trees um but that is something like I do but going on a solo date can really help you date yourself especially if you got out of a relationship recently and you just be like, okay, this person wastes my time. Okay, I'm just going to, like, you know, love myself, this and that. You know, go buy yourself something. Give yourself something. Take yourself out for dinner, you know. I feel like that is so normalized to take yourself out for dinner. And it's so good that it's so normalized nowadays. Because I'm not going to say nothing, but I just like how... There are more women who would rather take themselves out on a date or buy themselves gifts than expecting a man to do it. It's just how the world is, which is the sad truth. And then and the last thing is, which I usually do this, is listening to your body when it's telling you to rest. This is so true. How can you get a million things done and you know you're tired, but you're telling yourself, I'm not tired, I'm not tired, I'm not tired, I'm not tired, but your body will give up on you and you will soon just feel like, okay, I need a nap. And then five minutes later, you'd be like, oh, I got to do something. And then five more minutes later, you'd be like, I need a nap. That is like your body telling you. Or if you feel weak, go take a nap. Because that's also like a sign of being tired. Like if you don't feel like doing anything, you don't feel motivated, you just feel very unmotivated, you feel very lazy, sluggish. Those like other signs of like, go take a rest. Because your body is telling you, it's giving you all these signs and all you're doing is ignoring them which you shouldn't so yeah besties but um, before we close on today's episode remember that you can follow you against your podcast even though like i said this like in the middle of the episode but you can follow you against your podcast on insta and tiktok which is you against you pod dot by deja you can also follow my personal instagram which is deja underscore nicole underscore and that's also the same username as my personal tiktok so those will be in the show notes down below go subscribe like and comment this video and go subscribe to the you against you podcast youtube channel we're almost at 50 subscribers and also go like and wait hold up don't forget to leave a rating and review on apple Podcasts. i love reading those ratings and leaving a review on spotify podcast i might do something new on the podcast i don't know yet it's like in the works but i am planning to do something new on the podcast so stay tuned whatever that is like my brain is like very very like thinking right now but um yeah so go do those things also again 
The quote of the day is, no matter where you are, there is a reason why you're there. The affirmation of the day is, I enjoy a life of happiness, health, and harmony. And the general prompt of the day is, what is your favorite wellness activity? Also, remember that it's you against you, not you against the world. And that you can also share this episode when you're listening to this and tag you against you podcast, Instagram, so we can share it. Also, remember that to always go after your goals, no matter what, besties. And i see you on the next episode. If you do have any, like, episode ideas, I, what I might do is do, like, a Google form of just episode ideas. Now that I think about it, um... And anonymous, like, submissions of just questions that I might just answer throughout, like, each episode. If y'all, I might do that. I'm, I'm going to ask on Instagram. But I will be having, like, anonymous, that's my plan, anonymous submissions and episode topics on the You Against You podcast. Because I really want to engage with you guys. And that is my goal, to just grow this community on how I envision it. Also, before I close down today's episode, go support my business. The link to the Etsy shop and Insta and TikTok will all be in the show notes. And again, remember it's you against you, not you against the world. And always follow your goals no matter what. This is my goal. This, me doing content while a college student is something that I never thought I would do. Um, but I love doing this. I love connecting with you guys. And I love, you know, building a small community. And that I know one day it would be something bigger. But I love you guys. And i see you on the next episode. And bye. <laughs>